I've just got Ryan to come on and we're just going to go through a few things and yeah, get his responses to basically the hate that sort of he gets and <laughs> what other people might experience. What hate? What hate? <laughs> hate? No one hates me. <laughs> no, just, just a couple. Hey, man. Thanks for having me on. No, that's, thanks for coming on. So what would you think your ratio of haters versus non-haters would be? Do you have oh, a... It's pretty, it's pretty high. Uh, I, I didn't know how many mid-ground people there are. I, I would guess that about... If, if we just went off the percentage of people that follow my channel, um, I got 52,000 subs. They're not all talkative. But oh, so if we're going off the overall percentage, it might be like 5% of people are really passionate and either hate me or support me. But if we go about, if I did it as a percentage of the talkative people, I'd say it's 50, 50 of the talkative yeah. people. Half of them hate me, half of them support me, but the haters are the loudest ones. Yeah. They're, they're, they're yeah. Definitely the loudest ones. Yeah. Do, do you think the haters are probably a reason, obviously you can get matches and, like, do they bring probably more excitement than what the non-haters would bring? Like, you um, know what I, I mean? I, I think, I think, arguments' sake, for arguments' sake, yes, because uh, if there was an opposition, then there wouldn't be that conversation about whether I'm delusional, whether I'm got my head screwed on, and and I can actually, I'm actually like in the extreme, on one side of the coin, people, people think I legitimately am am a at best amateur arm wrestler uh, that is just utterly delusional that just talks up shit just to get money and get a match and get paid at the end of the day. They think I'm actually terrible. Uh, Which is and- crazy when you think about some of the guys you've beaten. It's like, yeah. Well, do, do they yeah, rate those guys pot. high? <laughs> well, that's what you can't use logic with them. They're, they're very, very emotionally uh, uh, and very shallow in terms of their data that they go off they just go off whatever's the most recent thing and i mean it's very I've, I've certainly discovered what it's like i feel i understand what it's like to be a politician where you, i don't think you can ever like that, that whole delusional ryan bowen series um do you watch the context them? of that like oh yeah i watch them for sure <laughs> absolutely i'm actually pretty impressed at the amount of dedication whoever it is that's out there that's making them i think i, I think it started i don't think it's been the same person the whole time but Whoever's done the last three or four of them is the same person. And their their production level is going up. And they must watch so many freaking hours of my stuff to find it all. Uh, yeah, that's the crazy. thing that makes me laugh is how much work goes, <laughs> goes into finding all the contradictory things I say. But like I said, I feel like, like Donald Trump or something where you just can go... Like, I don't think it's possible for anyone. I think if, if anyone had... A, had Someone go through all their videos in a fine tooth comb. You could you could easily find contradictory things oh, <laughs> and yeah. make them look stupid. But um, but no, yeah, I definitely watch it, man. I definitely watch the delusional series. And do you think a lot of it comes from I don't know, maybe jealousy? Some small guy from Australia is like maybe doing something that they think somebody well, think bigger should have done a long time ago. Or the internet is a really strange place uh and it's taken a long time for me to get used to uh that that ecosystem because people people clearly have a safety net where they can say anything anonymously uh and and they they can have an equal voice almost with with other people that should have a bigger voice like we see it a lot in professional arm wrestling forums um a, a, a talkative person that's not even an arm wrestler can become as loud as someone that's an established pro very easily in the internet where in the real world arm wrestling sense they they've got no credibility at all but because of the internet uh, you can you can develop a very loud voice so it's very it's very hard to understand um whether that comes from a place of jealousy maybe for some people uh well it's just fun to i don't know that's what they get their endorphin hit from and that little dopamine hit from the internet that we all we all know what it's like we get we check our phone we get addicted to our phones their form of addiction is is the ultimate form of addiction is is baiting someone like me if they get an emotional response from me i think that's that's their fun 
Um, and if yeah. they don't get it from me, they'll get it. They'll get it if a bunch of other people agree with them. Yeah, or they, from they, your they supporters same... might fire back. Yeah, yeah. Positive, yeah. So you know, I positive. think I think that that's a lot of a lot of it. Uh, at the end of the day, I I, <laughs> I try to just learn to not care. That's it's it's a constant thing of trying not to ever take it personal. Uh, it's easy to take it personal. You do take it personal at first. Yeah. Um, but if like, I would be worried if if the people I knew that people that knew me best, if they started saying things, then I'd be worried. Like if you started yeah. saying Ryan's a delusional dickhead on 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 the internet, I'd be I'd be like, oh shit, Carl thinks I'm a delusional dickhead. And because you know me yeah. on a much more personal yeah. level, but it doesn't bother me when someone from the other side of the world who isn't an arm wrestler, who's never, never met me, nor gripped me, nor, nor pulled professionally says I'm a delusional fool. I, it doesn't bother me. And do you uh, find that does I, change if, after someone meets you? Does their opinion kind of swing a little bit? I, 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 I'm not a, you know what I'm like in person. I'm not yeah. a confrontational yeah. type person. I'm a pretty easy going dude. And I've never, I don't have run-ins with people in life that's very rare like even even all the tension between rob and i it wouldn't surprise me if rob and i got on when we finally got in, yeah. in the same room like it wouldn't surprise me at all uh, uh, so i mean anybody that yeah. meets you can see sort of your passion for arm wrestling and how you want it to grow and and just get better and better so i find it hard to find yeah. a reason to really hate you if you've met you in person it's yeah i don't know it's, <laughs> the, the energy is always positive and yeah 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 uh yeah but so the, it all comes back it's like that the whole internet thing is um again it's a it's a strange dynamic like i remember my first i'd say probably my first ten thousand subscribers on youtube I had nothing but positivity essentially there was no one saying anything negative at all um but then i started noticing it uh popping up from then on and i guess it's just a it's just a percentage game but then yeah. it, it, it doesn't take it only takes takes 0.1 percent and you've got a few talkative people that are that are really uh loud and 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 noticing uh what's going on and um so now at fifty thousand, like it, it's it's one percent is 500 people so if one percent of people think i'm an idiot there's 500 voices going yeah. going pretty loud and that's 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 a big that sounds very loud. Like I said, the haters are the loudest oh, ones. Yeah, so. loudest. I was actually <laughs> going to ask that if there was a, a moment in time where you could sort of pinpoint when it all started happening. But yeah, so you reckon yeah. it was probably think, around 10,000? Oh, around 10,000, but it's very much linked to my own aspirations as an arm wrestler as well. I think that's where the, the majority of the Delusional Ryan Bowen series is based is is saying that that I think I'm better than I am. That's the whole theme is I think I'm better yeah. than I am. And they, they get that because I, my method of improving is to always try to seek out people, try to seek out matches with people that are better than me. That's, that's yeah. always been my case since, since I began. I, if I, if you want to be, if you're a novice and you want to be a high end amateur, pull high end amateurs. Once you're in a high end amateur and you, if you want to be pro pull pros Yeah, and it yeah. keeps on going. I want to be, I, I think I'm mid-level pro on the world level. I'm mid-level and I want to be elite. So how do I do that? I, yeah. I ask for matches with elites. <laughs> and I think if anybody was there from the start, they would have seen that right from the beginning. I mean, I can remember back when you sort of just popped up and I think it wasn't yeah. long and you challenged Jesse, which Jesse yeah. at the time was an amazing. And Jesse, and and Jesse six owed me. Yeah. He six thought, owed me. I mean, it was a good match, but there was, there was moments was a good in that match, match where I thought, oh, geez, me. Ryan's like come up really quick. This guy's just popped yeah. up out of nowhere, but. Yeah, and, oh, yes. then, and then there were there were people like you and Grant Tolentino who were the untouchable top guys in the eighty kilo division. And I remember, well, and Sam Safira, you, Sam, and Grant with a with a with the three amigos at the top. That I just thought, oh, I've had, I, I can't wait. And yeah, but Jesse was my first first goal, and yeah. And then after I got Jesse, I remember thinking Sam because he was local to me as well. Uh, I don't think you and I did you and I pull in the early early days. Uh, yeah, I actually found an old video of us. I don't know. You came over to WA for the Toolmart one, where I think yep. it was the first yep. prize money, and I got you in the first round in prelims and that, yep. and then you came back and beat me twice in the final. So, there you go. <laughs> so, That's so all right. I remember. That, that, that would be our earliest. It was, it was it was it was pissing down rain, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was actually from memory. Yeah, we were upstairs in a building. Yeah, it, it, it was. Yeah, 
Yeah, I just remember, yeah, yeah I, 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 like flash pressing you to the pad and you were just like, whoa, all right, that's different. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah. You, you readjusted and, yeah, beat me, I think, pretty comfortably after that. But, but. but so I do agree with, on the, back to the haters thing, in the sense that I know that it's my ambition to constantly grow that fuels them most. And, uh, and I'm, I'm okay with that. And I knew that this would happen. I like, I, I remember thinking this years ago, um, that someday what I'm doing right now on a regional and state and national level will be happening on an international level. And I, I ruffled the feathers of people at regional state and national levels with my, my ambitions at the time. And I remember it frustrating people that were a couple of steps above me thinking, Ryan, stop bloody asking for matches with Andrew Lee. Stop asking for matches with, with, stop, stop trying to get into the fit X at 95 kilos. You, you're not good enough. And, and yeah. I remember I qualified, like I qualified, I scraped in, and I, I, I got in to that fit X and then I went, I went two in the fit X. I lost to Sean Hennessy and Jamie Carr. Uh, and I got, and I got hammered. I came last in the fit at 95 fit, kilo fit X. But for me, I was, I was just so thrilled that I, I, I got, got there and I made, I had the opportunity to pull those guys. And I think, and then it just kept on doing it. So I, I, I remember doing all this on a local and like I said, local state and eventually national level. And I remember realizing someday this is going to be international level that I'm doing this exact same process. And I, I, I anticipated in my head, I thought when that day arrives, there's going to be a lot of people that I'm going to piss off. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's where we are now. We're, we're in the thick of, like I have thousands of people that think I'm a dick because, and they say I'm not worthy. I don't deserve the matches that I'm seeking. And I, and it pisses them off that I get them. And, I, and they say, I get them because of my marketing value. Yeah. And I get them because I have a YouTube channel, not that I deserve them. But like I said, it's, it's been, it's just a scaled up exact same thing that I've always done in my, in my time. Yeah, um, so. Except I, I don't see anything different from when you first started. So, so yeah. like I said, it's just, it's gone up now. You're international yeah. instead of domestic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do, do you think there was ever a time with YouTube where you were sort of thinking, oh, stuff this, this is like getting too um, much? There were times where it was pretty pretty frustrating and depressing um but at those times uh, they're, they're, i've had a, i've had a few key players over the years uh that have that have helped me in that regard uh and, and there's a lot of a lot of other big players in the arm wrestling world uh, a lot of big players in the youtube arm wrestling space that that are keeping their finger on the pulse with the whole community and and every now and then, if if something happens where there's just the haters are pouring it on me, I always get these really nice supportive messages from from Devin or from Derek Smith or from Juji Mufu or from someone saying, "Hey, hey, just checking in. Hey, you, you doing all right? <laughs> You're copping a lot of heat right now. You doing okay?" And I'm like, "Yeah, cool, man. Thanks for thanks for touching base. We'll chat about it and that." But but like but I remember when I met Juji uh, in Canada and bottom eight, and then I I did a I helped him out on an Australian tour that he did um as an arm wrestling expert for him on his tour but he, he shared lots of stories about just the negativity I mean, he's he's in the millions of followers yeah. level so you can imagine one percent of people who think he's a dick is a lot of yeah, people yeah. he's dealing he's dealing, <laughs> he's dealing with a lot of people um what ten thousand people or something that's a, that's a lot of people that can potentially be very nasty um and so he 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 shared his experiences and just hearing his experiences allowed me to see my, my experiences on, on, a, on a scale and, and, and listen very intently to how he handled all those different things and put in place the same sort of mental, uh, mental preparedness or shields or whatever. And just, you just, you, and the more you can anticipate, the easier it is to handle when it arrives uh, in that hating sort of sense, because one like like things like you can't ever keep up with trying to justify or teach or correct a hater. Yeah, uh, you just can't. If if they say something that's completely false about you, if you engage with them to try to correct them, you lose, and you end up frustrated and you end up 
feeling down and and and, it, and other people end up laughing at you because you're trying to explain and and it's just it's it's a yeah. no go zone <laughs> so do that, you, there, were, there were things sorry yeah i was just gonna say, oh, so say there were things that so, <laughs> they were things that juji juji was the first person that really pointed me in that direction juji and tom yeah at the time yeah. So do you just flat out just try not to read the negative stuff now? Or is it just you just no, skip, I read it all. I read it all. I hundred percent read it all. Um so just don't if you're respond a hater to out it. there. If you're a hater out there, yeah, I read it. Uh listen, I actually think the haters the haters are part of what improves the channel. They're a part of what improves a person and the way that they deliver their content and the direction of their content. They're just doing it in a dick way. Like I said, they're either they're, they're, there's either something up. They're either uh, jealous and inadequate, or they're just having fun because they're kind of freaking sadistic and they just enjoy yeah. the yeah. thrill of it. Whatever it is, it's something like that. But there is actually always this value in it as well. When I see someone criticizing um, anything, whether it's my arm wrestling, whether it's my channel direction, whether it's my production value, if they're being nasty about it and all that sort of stuff, I I, I take it with a grain of salt. I don't I don't agree with them. But I take it on board as data. I, I look at the comment section is the like lifeblood of your channel in terms of your evolution and where you're going to yeah. go and what you need to change or fix. And so the ratio of support to, to hate is one factor, but they often very specifically give you clues as to something you can improve and change. Sound quality might be shit. They might be talking about, I don't know, like lighting. All, even if it's... <laughs> Yeah, lighting. But even if it's even if it's personal and it's something that's attacking your character, you can listen to it. Say, okay, asshole, that's great that you're a dickhead and you said it that way. But deep down, there's a bit of truth in what they're saying. That from their perspective, they think you're being X, Y, Z, or whatever. That you're 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 being rubbish as a human in this way. And so you can go, oh, okay, well, they think that, and you can you actually can turn that lump of coal into something better later on some some gold and 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 improve so i i read all the comments 100 percent, i read all the comments if someone's really nasty if someone's going personal someone's going family someone's going malicious someone's someone's blatantly lying in a sense that could cause further damage yeah i shadow ban them without hesitation uh absolutely i don't i don't don't dwell on it i don't respond i don't do anything i just go all right right. you're one of those guys see that i guess that's a different i mean yeah yeah, go shadow ban is simply they can still watch your videos they can still comment but i won't see the comment nor will anyone else yeah 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 because i was going to say there's kind of a difference isn't there because even when you're on the fix and you know some of the super chats come in and they'll be about you or whatever but sometimes they're just sort of funny and it's like i don't know you, you wouldn't know yeah. obviously you're doing the old <laughs> double birds and stuff but i don't know some of them i'm like i don't know if that guy's really nasty or it's just yeah, yeah. well yeah and i've met those kind of haters too like i've had people message me and that are those type of super chatters and that and they say to me hey ryan i just want to let you know i actually really appreciate and support what you're doing uh, I hope you know that this that yeah. I'm not trying to upset or I'm just just poking fun at you for the sake of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and 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 I I I get that there is that, that there's a percentage of the of them that are like that. Um, but there's also a percentage of them that are out are assholes for the sake of yeah. being assholes. So. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was because I mean yeah. sometimes you'll see you'll laugh at the comments. So I, I think to myself, oh, maybe he knows that guy and knows that it's kind of mm. just a bit of a poke just not yeah. really well well some of the some of the trolls their objective like some of the trolls slash haters slash whatever we want to call them they they're building a brand in their own little online presence as a as a troll hater and you start to recognize you start to see names pop up again and again and again and again that are constantly jabbing at you um and like like Devin Larratt and Sap the Bee, for instance. Like in the lead up to the match with John, Sap the Bee was at Devin constantly, oh, yeah. constantly. He loves, and John. Devin, he loves John. Yeah, and, De- and <laughs> Devin was 
butting back at him, like saying, fuck you, Sap the Bee, like publicly and all this kind of stuff. Sap the Bee is getting a real thrill out of that. That yeah. Devin, that he's, because of his continuous, relentless nature, uh, that he's got Devin actually on the line, so to speak. So they're, they're playing their own game. They're playing their own brand. There's just the only payment that they're getting is that dopamine hit that feels good that Devin or whoever it is they're targeting has, uh, has bit and that the other troll communities witnessing it. So internet's a funny and strange place. <laughs> is that when you know you've made it? When you start getting some, uh, the trolls and you're like, yeah. yes, I've, I've done it. <laughs> I think, I think so. I, I think it is actually as, as weird as it is. I think it is a hallmark of uh, it's, and it's a sign that you are getting somewhere. Uh, when people start feeling the need to publicly criticize you, I think you're, you're, you're at a stage where you're consistent enough that people are noticing you and, and either and want to tell you to shut up or something. But um, yeah, I think it is, that it, it's, it's not that you want it. You don't seek it out, but yeah. It just comes it with is the territory. <laughs> territory. It does. Yeah. So do you, hey, think, you got any haters, so Carl? Think, um, I don't know. I've had a few people sort of like comment saying, put a video back up or something and I'll sub back to your channel. And I'm just like, I really don't care. Like if yeah. you don't want if you don't yeah, want to sub get... to my channel, then don't sub yeah, to the, my channel. The, th like... the threat to unsub is is really not yeah. that much of a worry, is it? Like um, I, I, you... I did this more to build my own confidence because normally I've I been mean, in mm. the past, I've been a bit of a shy person. So I thought maybe yeah. putting myself out there with this might even help me when I'm at comps, be a little bit less nervous. And yeah. like I said, yeah. I'm getting more comfortable well, now. Have, in front have of a it, look so. at. I think Jordan Davis is a really good example of evolution of confidence in front of a camera, in front of people. When when I met Jordan and he was 18 years old, he was a very shy kid. He was quiet. He wasn't. But through arm wrestling, he's now An incredibly animal. confident in front of a camera. He can public speak. He's he's really switched on. Um, and, and killing it. So yeah, I, yeah, I de definitely think that, that getting it, getting out online is a, is a really, it's, it, it's a healthy thing for oneself to learn and develop those skills. Uh, it definitely is something that helps later in life and in other walks of life as well. But it is a, it is a uh, difficult process for anyone who starts out. Like there's demons in your head, there's hurdles you got to get over to be able to get through that initial phase where you you're self-critical uh, and you're just waiting for like, like a hater could just push you over the edge sort of thing. You'd pack up. I've seen lots of, uh, I've, I've had buddies of mine ask me to help them start a YouTube channel outside of arm wrestling in the music industry. This guy that I'm thinking of, he started and he put stuff up and I thought it was amazing, but just, the first negative comment comes in and, and he's taking the video down and yeah. things like that. Yeah. And you think it's, it's, it is tricky. It, it does take a degree of thick skin. Um, but yeah, it, it, I think it's unavoidable. Everyone who ever decides to get on camera uh, and create a YouTube channel. But what about, what about these guys? You'd know in arm wrestling uncensored, you know, Grant diet. Yeah. Yeah. He might like, he has thick skin, clearly. You look at that, like he's his content. I'm gonna say it, Grant, if you're watching or listening, it's rubbish. <laughs> his content's rubbish. It's terrible. But he keeps going and he gets people people talk shit about like he he has, I think he his ratio is probably 70% people <laughs> call him a dickhead and 30% people like him and laugh. I like him and laugh at what he says because he he, seem, he tends to support me. Um, but the truth of the matter is his content's rubbish, but look at him go. He is, he is yeah. consistent. Now, someone like Grant Diet is someone that will make it through those initial phases and is someone that actually will get something of value at, at the end. He'll have a product where he's like, hey, look, for three or four years, I continuously did what I did. And now he's known as that he, he'll become... Uh, and get enough traction as that rat bag commentator or that rat bag uh, personality that that talks shit about arm wrestling or whatever like there's there's room for everything in the world of social media uh and it, it, it just takes consistency and, and a big willingness to be 
have mud thrown at you and just keep going. <laughs> It'd be great though. Yeah, it's a good example. <laughs> so if you had uh, 500,000 subscribers and 450,000 of them were haters, would that bother you one bit? If they're Ooh, subscribed what? and they're watching and they're <laughs> watching all your videos and is that is there anyone out there that you can think of that's like that? Look, uh, what about what are those um shit I can't think. The two brothers that box. Oh yeah. Box. Yeah, I think I can't remember their names, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah. The one that looks like Matt Mask. Yeah. Well he's his brother, whatever his name is, he's I think universally hated, but but you either hate him or you laugh at how much he's hated. I don't know. Like, I, th I think that if you had 90% haters, it would be very, <laughs> it would be hard. <laughs> You'd have to turn the comments off completely. <laughs> Just <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You go, you go mainstream media, CNN style, turn comments off when, and, and post videos. But, but end of the day, it's, uh, it, it, it's it's uh, when people say haters turn into supporters um that is true as well i have seen that occur um i remember when i it was just a video recently which one was it? um one of the videos i put out i can't remember which one it was but someone commented in there they said i'm usually uh oh no i'm he said something like I can say that I'm regularly someone who says I hate Ryan Bowen, but God damn it, Ryan, I can't stop watching your videos and, and you're winning me over. <laughs> like, hey, so. I think I've seen that comment actually. I'm on, in yeah, the, it was something, something like along yeah. those lines. Because I mean, some of the new content you've been doing, it's been like pretty different and it's been good. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I've tried to, and, and uh, you're always going through seasons where you're trying to grow and improve your content and, I've got a few chapters going now that that sort of TV style uh, presentation where I, I, I cut a lot of scenes together. I go and visit people and places, ask other people questions and mash it all together. Um, that's something that I'm really enjoying. And I think there's a lot of value there and, and it, it got great response from the community. This, this style of thing with a, a studio and, and matches that are commentated live from here. Um, with post-match analysis and all that people are yet to see it in its full uh flight but they're starting to see that i'm doing different things there and then there's of course there's the just me being me being me excuse me whether it's training or arm wrestling or just going for a walk and talking about whatever the hell's on my mind like my channel's a big mess of a whole heap of styles like of content like i don't That's know good. people i've had a few, i've had a few people ask me why why do you do that why don't you separate your content into different channels why don't you have a channel for this stuff a channel for um for your tournament footage and all that sort of stuff but to be honest uh i wouldn't do that because i i don't want to get shoeboxed into any one thing like i'm in a studio commentating now a year from now i might say i'm over the studio <laughs> i don't want to do it anymore i want to go back to just walking and talking and being all philosophy yeah. like Devin. Yeah. um so i never know when it's going to change and it that's one of the, the things I enjoy most about the career is the fact that you can change. Uh, YouTube channels for me are most reflective of uh, your story. You don't necessarily know what your story is, but a YouTube channel documents your story. It shows you where all the different winding paths you took. Um, and so I like whenever someone asks me, for instance, what do you call a YouTube channel? I say, just call it your name. Uh, I went through phases where like this was pound for pound arm wrestling originally. Um, no, sorry. It was monster products arm wrestling originally. That's where it started for anyone who's a, a pre earlier than 1000 subscriber. They'll know that this started as monster. Pro In fact, that the, the email for this YouTube channel is, is monster products. Um, so it, it will always evolve. Uh, and so I don't want to, have separate channels but i also like i don't know like i said it's 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 about fumbling through what you enjoy and youtube and, and an online presence allows you to to do that and so if people come along for the ride because they relate to you they enjoy watching you evolve and for every hater that's out there um you do also get even though they're quieter 
they're they're far more meaningful when they do comment. You'll get a direct message from someone who who who'll say, "Hey man, I, I've actually I was actually subscriber 382, and I've seen so much of the stuff that you've done and developed and and worked on, and and it's really cool to have seen what you've done, and and they and they're really they're really grateful for for what you've what you've put out, and it's and it's um that that that's more empowering than anything else and that that cuts through the haters very very easily when you get messages like that and, and they, they come routinely so yeah is most of the hate purely because of the delusion or do you think it's something in my else? case i think it is yeah in, in my case i think yeah. it's predominantly because of the, the the delusion being that as an arm wrestler they think i'm asking for matches that i have zero chance of I think that's the, the the crux of the delusion. And because we're stuck down here in, in here in Australia, and because it's been two years of bloody COVID killing travel, I've yeah. had no ability to prove them otherwise. We're still riding on me getting stomped at Zloty. And the only thing that's happened outside of me getting stomped at Zloty is getting stomped by Lachlan. Yeah. That's it. That's all. That's that's my two years. I, I, I've done other things, obviously. Like that, people very quickly... Forget that I've beaten Chance Shaw, that I've beaten Dan Mosier, that I've beaten Dale Slankston and Alan Guerra and Evan Burgoyne and Milkman uh, over in WA. Yeah. People quickly forget all those things, uh, and they, they, they don't, they don't, they just don't care. <laughs> but so they, that two years has made it uh, very difficult for me to get out there and show my my level. Like I said, a lot of people, a lot of the haters that follow me genuinely think i can't arm wrestle for shit they, yeah. but they, i think those yeah. ones aren't aware of my other matches i think they're just flat out they're new enough that they've only seen me say Losses. that i was going to be beat lachlan get smashed by lachlan and then call out rvj who's who's a, a world a, re- a recognized world elite and so they're just like this guy is properly delusional and, I, and if that's all you knew i get it i get yeah. it yeah i would i would agree with it <laughs> But yeah, no, totally. hopefully when the, the world opens up a bit more, we get the opportunity to travel. And like, if travel restrictions aren't um, a thing, my, I, will, I will probably be overseas for at least six months of the year. I think my wife and I would travel and we just pop into different countries and I just arm wrestle and create yeah. content. And that's what we'd be doing. Um, yeah, imagine the, the level get, then. Obviously, your level oh, would rise even more. It's, it'd be yeah. so good to grip up with all these different styles and 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 just arm wrestlers from around the world. And and I'd just be stopping in at, at elite elite pullers places and just just <laughs> gripping up with them. <laughs> it'd be great. God, the world! I yeah, wish yeah, I could so. just get out of WA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's going on ass. with that? Are you, are you guys? Are you guys? Are you guys going to be let out? Or it's you can get out, but you can't get back in. It. Um, we can we can leave, but uh, there's just a full 14 day quarantine on return. So I could go over to Queensland tomorrow, but then I have to yeah, quarantine. Like probably. so, it's just not worth it. It's, so I don't, and then there's no date even set when that's going to live. So it's just yeah, pain you in guys, the ass. What are the numbers on COVID like over there at the moment for you in the state? Um, I think we're still only I don't know under a thousand total cases or something like that. It's, okay, it, so it's still, still it hasn't small, gone but, wild but, yet. They'll change it once it goes wild, I guess. Because yeah, well, then they're like, oh, well, I guess it's going, it's going, once it's going wild, it's going wild, let yeah. everyone in. But So I just hope it's at least open by bloody over the top. <laughs> it's not that yeah. far away. And I'm like thinking, God, there's a good <laughs> chance WA won't be able to travel. So yeah. yeah. It's okay. going to suck. I mean, I've been training probably hardest I've trained ever the last sort of year and mm. a half. And I mean, I just can't do anything. So it's frustrating. Yeah. It, is, it is. I just I just want the match with Sam. I just want to see like that level. And I want the I want the match with Sam in this room. Yeah. I want to commentate the damn thing. <laughs> I want to see you guys fight for a thousand dollars or something. And, and uh, so as soon as I, it's I, open, I, I'll be there. It's just on, yeah, just on. waiting for that border to open. Yeah, nice. Well, consider it booked. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, but. Haters, uh, I remember when uh, Michael Todd, people used to, there was a time when people would say Michael Todd was the most hated in arm wrestling. And I think that I've, I think I've surpassed him now. 
Yeah, I'm I mean, going past my, he my did cop a lot, didn't he? He'd probably yeah. be another one to sort of get his thoughts on it, and yeah, because he seemed to yeah, be copping it pretty bad in the early days. And hmm. what if I beat RVJ using a king's move? How would the hate go then? Do you think? <laughs> oh. What do you think would happen? Jeez, oh, <laughs> I don't know. It, yeah, it would skyrocket. Oh, and, and then you'd get the people that are like, "Oh, he just beat him because he was using an arm bar lock," or like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Something crazy. Oh, I can I can imagine that the aftermath of that would be intense. It would be intense. All the haters would say, "You're weak, Ryan. You you just cheated. You didn't. You're fundamentally useless. You, you don't respect the rules of the sport. You just." Whatever. I mean, the, the the haters are probably going to say that about. Obviously, the strap's going to be easy for you to get. So, like, yeah. they're probably they're probably going to bring that up anyway. Oh, I, he just done it because he got to the straps or. Yeah. Like there'll well, always be I, an man, excuse. I, I, I freaking excuse love me. the strap. I got to talk about the strap and haters and all that sort of stuff all combined. Like I, I'm training for RBJ and I pulled with Fatali today, for instance. And I, I, I pulled, I pulled last night with Lachlan and, and Marcus and, and I had a big session. And then this morning was uh, with the Gold Coast Club and Fatali turned up. He was the last guy I pulled. And I thought, oh man, I'm in trouble. Vitaly's just rocked up. I'd already pulled Jordan. I'd already pulled a bunch of, I'd pulled Sam Burnett. Uh, I, would, I had some work in my arm and Vitaly turned up out of straps. I said, let's just ease into a hook. Come on, just, just ease into a hook and into the hook, out of straps. I can like delay him, but no, he was just, he was just pulling through me. I put that damn strap on and oh my goodness. <laughs> All of a sudden I'm just disengaging him and pinning him it's like oh and he's like what the hell do you do with that strap what happened to the strap and i'm like oh it's a spell that hopefully yeah. i can cast on rvj as well connection <laughs> yeah and the, and and the haters will uh yeah they'll they'll say that it was uh cheating or that i didn't arm wrestle it outside the go but i actually can't wait i can't wait to stir the haters and to stir rob like that first 30 seconds when we go to grip up I'm going to, I'll go up, I'll grip up and then I'll, I'll pull back and wipe my brow and uh, sneeze or something like that and go re-chalk again. And that 30 seconds is just going to be coming up. And as I go over the grip again, I'll, I'll, I'll give Rob a wink. I'll wink at him. I'll, like <laughs> we're in the strap, aren't we Rob? <laughs> that wasn't very hard. I want to piss them all off. I want to use every corner of the rules to piss them off as much as I can. <laughs> I mean, he seems to be another one as well, I guess. He's got a, obviously a lot of supporters, but he kind of still seems like he's got a lot of people that don't agree with him mm. as well, doesn't there? So, Well, he's got a very strong opinion. So anyone yeah. with a strong opinion is going to have both. And Rob, Rob's entering the phase now where his channel is big enough that haters for him will be in decent numbers. So I think he's at about 10,000 yeah. followers now. Um, so that was that magical number for me as well. Because when Rob started and Rob's just spitting out venom like Rob does, uh, everyone loved him. Everyone on his channel was like, yeah, Rob's awesome. Look at Rob. He just says what he thinks and he's freaking an animal and yada, yada, yada. Everyone, everyone who was commenting was loving Rob. And I think that really made Rob feel good and would have fired him up. And now he's at a phase where, oh, the shuffle the sand down it's not all support now it's now now there's people saying rob you're a loudmouth yeah. you're a disrespectful yeah. idiot and, and you're rude and what and that would be difficult for him to hear on repeat um and yeah how how, how you handle that like i said it, it it takes a long time and I, I i wish him well on doing it but you can't have a strong opinion and of all the arm wrestlers out there, Rob probably has one of the strongest opinions. Uh, and he happily, boldly represents that he just says exactly what he thinks. So he is going to attract significant haters. If he continues with it, he'll have a, a very high percentage of people that in conflict with him on his own channel. But uh, like I said, he, he can push on and be fine and, and keep being who oh. he is. And he'll have these supporters. Um, but he, he'll definitely have to deal with people telling him that he's an idiot. <laughs> And he seems like the sort of person who will respond to all of them. Well, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, that's the problem. He likes to yeah, argue. That's why. <laughs> that's why he'll have so many because that dopamine hit that they get from 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 having someone respond, very easy to make Rob respond. Yeah. I mean, 
a lot of people have asked me, is that why you picked Rob to target? And I said, no, I didn't pick Rob, but circumstances led to Rob and I being considered as a potential comparison, not even necessarily a match, but just a comparison, you know, lifts in the gym and things like that. And when we were being compared, then I couldn't help myself, but Brett Prod, uh, this big, easily, easily provoked bear, uh, who just, yeah, bit back. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, haters will do the same for sure. Even Devin cops a lot. Even Devin. Even Devin, as, as chilled and as relaxed as he is, he cops a lot of hate from the, um, the fans of European superiority. Yeah. yeah. If you think European arm wrestlers are hands down the best, you generally hate Devin and you say oh, that he's a, yeah. he's, he dodges matches and you know, and that's been the consistent the, thing isn't it they've always come out and said oh he didn't take matches with all the big guys but then you get people yeah. like Neil Pickup come out and say no we couldn't get him a match but yeah. it's like they don't no listen to say, it yeah. it's like yeah. no that's not true yeah, they, just, they, they just call Neil then a, a Devin uh, fanboy instead <laughs> well, i don't think neil's neil just like you just loves arm wrestling doesn't he there's no yeah i don't yeah, think neil's he's got, got fans yeah. he just loves everybody that's that's going to put yeah, on he, and he's good, yeah he's proven match. that but he's he's commentated for every major league there is be it russian leagues or or american leagues or freaking anywhere else in between uh, he's been there in support of all of them so yeah it's it's crazy it, the, the one of the interesting things is the the season that we're in as a sport in terms of how we present to the world. Um, we're in this very heavy social media season um, yeah. because of COVID and the big major events, uh, not having a, an ability to put on anything. A lot of matches, super matches have been done on an individual athlete level promoted by individual athletes, instead of it being promoted by a big corporate entity like WAL, that's got a, massive budget where they're just pumping out high level material and marketing all of that's falling on the athletes so the athletes fumble through and do that themselves and that makes them far more vulnerable to the direct hate i think um like they, yeah it's if if i had a very quiet like imagine an athlete that has a very quiet social media presence but they're very loud via the wal's uh, loudspeaker like if someone was out there saying all this stuff about how they're gonna do well and they're gonna crush so and so and all that sort of stuff um but they were small in terms of their facebook activity that person would cop a whole lot less hate than than the person that's yeah. in sort of my situation where i'm loud on social media <laughs> yeah. but that's obviously trying to build build brand and yeah yeah and yeah, obviously improve the sport. Building, sport, building, building your, your own opportunity to progress. Um, it's all, it's, there's no easy route to the, to the top. Uh, it's messy. It's, it's a winding path. You don't know where the next step is, uh, but you just keep on, keep on going on. You keep on pushing forward with content. You keep on pushing forward with your own training. You keep on, pe people say, well, here's one thing I'll give the listeners that relative to me specifically. People say that I am acting in, the, in what I'm saying. Uh, I never act. I always believe that I, I represent my truth uh, in, in what I say. When I say I think I have a chance at beating someone, I do. I, do, I, I will never, ever, ever say I think I have a chance of beating someone if I don't. I got stomped by Lachlan. I went into that match believing I had a chance. The reality was I didn't know how strong Lachlan was going to be that day when he was fully serious and prepared. I'd never faced a fully serious and prepared. I'd faced a training version of him and I'd, I'd beaten him in the past at state titles, things like that. Uh, so all of that, I extrapolated like, yeah, okay. No, I believe I can do it. And I was wrong, but I, I did believe it prior. hundred yeah. percent. There was no act there. And, and it's the same when I say RVJ, I say RVJ, I believe there's a, there's a potential I win. Um, I believe, I, I also say, and people will happily gloss over that I say, he's the favorite. I'm the underdog quite substantially. And uh, he's runs on paper are substantially better than mine. Like by it's chalk and cheese. 
but I don't fear the man. And I do genuinely believe there's a possibility I win. Yeah. Um, and again, I, if, if I'm, if I'm as wrong with Rob as I was with Lachlan, uh, I don't care. <laughs> I keep going. I'll, I'll, I won't oh, stop. Yeah. I'll do it again. <laughs> I almost think that match is a bit like the, the Devon, um, Levin match, Levan, Levan match, yeah. where you, you and Rob, it's like, I feel like if you get a stop and it's in an early enough round, there's a good mm. chance that your endurance is going to be going to be better than his. Uh, uh, I, I agree. I agree entirely. I think that the the strength ratios between the four of us are, are, are similar for our, uh, our opponents. Levan's stronger than Devin. Oh, yeah. Rob is stronger than me. That's pretty clear on a fundamental level it's pretty damn clear what's also clear is that devon has a wider array of technical options uh and i think that's also clear with me i have a wider yeah. spectrum of technical yeah. options and then there's also the factors of of the rule sets and the whole uh using fouls to your advantage and things like that that we know devon will do Oh, Hell, yeah. Devon or King's move. Heaven, Devon will King's move using an illegal King's move. If, <laughs> he doesn't If care. that means he gets a stop. He'd prefer to get a stop with an illegal King's move um, if it puts work into Levan's hand and makes him vulnerable for the next round. And I'd do the same. Hell, I will, I will go into a deliberate foul if it means I get a stop. If I can sense that Rob's just too strong, of course I'm going to use that that running oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to use it. <laughs> That's the good thing about super matches, isn't it? You've, you've got time to adjust and change things. And, yeah. yeah. That's what makes but it so in, exciting. It's a, but in respect to, again, all tying it back to the haters and that, it, it, it's, I think that most content creators are representing their truth. I don't think people, um, it, it, it's just silly when you don't represent your truth. You, you end up, within yourself just being feeling like an idiot if you don't represent your truth uh so that's the whole thing remember for me a youtube channel is documenting your journey so i've documented to go from an australian novice to a world level mid-level pro where i'm currently at um, and so wherever i end on this journey however high i get you will be able to look back at my YouTube channel and say, oh, that's how we did it. And that's all it is. I'm not saying it's the way everyone has to do it, but that's how I did it. That's how I got, got there. And that to me is interesting. You'd be able to retrospectively look back and say, wow, look at this. He had to train like that. He had matches that he lost against these guys that were above him at the time, but that led to opportunity. He had to deal with a whole heap of haters, but that led to opportunity. Yeah, it's it's an interesting story in the end, and yeah, yeah. Someone will watch it one day when I'm dead and go, "That was pretty cool. Look at that that redhead. That was an arm wrestler. Uh, he was all right in the end. He was pretty good. But gee, he copped a lot of heat when he was uh when he was a early level pro. <laughs> like so, it, so is that sort of the advice you'd give to anybody thinking about starting a channel and uh, yeah, a bit worried about what might happen? Just yeah it's, it's it's hard to do i get it it's really hard to do but you have to i always the thing the mantra that got me through that was always um same as if you're an arm wrestler same as if you're doing anything in life there's going to be x amount of failures before you inevitably get to the success um and so rather than dwell on the failures actually try to rack them up as quickly as you can so in a youtube sense it'll be comments that upset you or it'll be videos that make you feel awkward. Uh, there might be a hundred videos that make you feel awkward between you starting a YouTube channel and you being at a point where your YouTube channel pays your entire life uh, and all your bills. So rather than suffering to reach those awkward videos and wanting to pack it all up, celebrate them and tick it off saying, all right, 99 to go, 98 to go, 97 to go. Because it might number might not be a hundred, but the thing is, there is a number. If you had a crystal ball and you could look forward and say, "Ah, oh, look at that! It's it's actually 77, 77 videos that I got to do," you'd then be excited about getting through those seventy-seven. You'd actually pump them out really quick. So that, even though we don't know the number, it's a it's a it's a mindset that when you change that, you inevitably grow a lot quicker. When you embrace 
failure and you actually look for the failure and you seek out the losses until you can't find them anymore. You seek out the awkward videos. So what it means to seek out an awkward video, for example, is to try something you're not good at. Like you said earlier on the show, you're on here because you know that it'll help you to get more confidence at tournaments. Yeah. Um, so the more videos you do, the more confident you're going to be at a tournament. You, you know that. So the faster you do these videos, the faster you get that end result. Um, so again, we seek out the awkward moments. We seek out the terrible videos by trying new content. We, we seek out, we grow as arm wrestlers by seeking out people that are better than us on the table. Um, and that, I don't know, that's, that's, and the, the resilience, the, the mental resilience you need to be able to do that is something that you just have to walk through and self-talk your way through it because it is tricky. But if you anticipate it rather than just let it surprise you, then you'll be able to deal with it. When, when that awkward video comes, you'll be able to say, oh shit, look at this. Here's one of those awkward video moments. Um, but like, I, 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 it's incredibly rare for me to delete a video that I put on YouTube. I, I, I take that, that advice very firmly yeah. to never delete a video. So I think there might've been one or two I've deleted, but it'll probably be singing or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you say that. I'm, I'm trying to, yeah, thinking about doing some different sort of things and yeah, videos that would probably be more awkward for me again. I've done all the training videos yeah. and I'm pretty good with them now, but now, yeah, I'm trying Tell to find... Me, I want to know. What are these awkward oh, ones? No, just like my like impressions or my predictions of a match or something like that. Like, Because, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously I've been in the sport for well, pretty much similar time yeah. to you, I guess. Yeah, 10, 10 years around there. And, I mean, I like yeah. to look pretty in-depth into things as well. So, I mean, when I'm thinking about a match, I'm, I'm just... Yeah, I thought maybe I'll just chuck, chuck in some of those videos up and whether people watch yeah, them or not. Yeah. I'm just, yeah, trying Absolutely. to find those awkward videos to just keep building that confidence and, yeah. Yep. Well, that's the thing about it. Like, um, not many people will watch in your early days. And it, it just, like, the only, like, I would watch your prediction videos because I, I, I personally know you and I'd personally be quite interested to see what your perspective is on any given match. I know I, know I would. And slowly but surely that builds how many people feel like they know you and one of the fastest ways for people to feel like they know you is for them to see regular content in all shapes and sizes they start to act like people will come up to me when i go overseas people will come up to me and talk to me like they really do know me they yeah. really they really feel like they're buddies with me almost and i have to i have to awkwardly think i have to i don't because i don't recognize their face at all I don't recognize their voice and i have to ask them hey what's who, who are you yeah. online and they'll be like oh yeah i'm so and so and they'll tell me their username and i'll be like oh yeah i remember that yeah. username i see it i see it all the time and then we've got and yeah and so they know they feel like they know you because they've seen a whole journey of good content rubbish content boring content but they've seen that you've never stopped uh and that's what makes people uh actually become attached to your story is consistency and uh, and the, the the more the, the more volume there is in your consistency the better if it's one video a week yeah it's hard for people to get to know you yeah but if you're putting out a, two videos a day oh my goodness the arm wrestling world whether they like it or not they're going to get to know you yeah <laughs> and that's kind of what i did yeah I'm, I'm trying i'm trying to sort of do at least yeah two sometimes three a week just trying to do yeah, nice. So I had a bit of a break Change. over Christmas, but would would, would you uh, would you change your channel name to Kyle Howard? Funny, I was just about to ask you that. Like on the whole name thing, I was like, oh, obviously you think it's a better idea to yeah. sort of hundred percent swap it to hundred percent. I only I think... sort of had it as that at the start because obviously my channel was going to be purely just to show people kind of how to use that handle. So hmm. I wanted yeah. it to be easy to find, but then I kind of started enjoying doing the videos and I thought, Oh, I'll just start doing some training videos. And yes, yeah. because grip and rip, uh, is very, it, 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 it's easy to get lost or missed. You see grip and rip, you don't, and, I, and it doesn't lead me back to you necessarily. Yeah. Just the first thought, but your channel, I think your channel is so much more you than it is 
Oh yeah, yeah it, it is now. Yeah, it yeah. is now. Yeah. So one hundred percent, change it tonight. I want to see this. Right, By the well, time you post this video, it better be posted from the Carl Howarth channel. Yeah, I wasn't sure if like that messes. So it doesn't mess with anything else, does it? That's what I wasn't sure no. on. It's yeah. yeah, I wasn't sure. I was like, no, oh, if I change the video, change, is it gonna get rid of all my you videos? Can change the YouTube. You can change your YouTube channel name. Uh, I think once every three months maximum or something like uh, that so there's a some weird weird time frame but yeah you can change the youtube name like i said i've had three this was monster products found found arm wrestling then ryan blue bomb should i put my and i, I remember in feeling there? so <laughs> much is that good? <laughs> I, was just, I was like should i put my nickname in there but <laughs> <laughs> well yeah I mean, whatever you want you either put your, your name or your nickname like whatever what, whatever you feel but but make it attached to you personally and i think um oh shit what was i gonna say no i forget three three names monster products ryan pound for pound yeah, that's right i remember being re it felt really good when i changed it to ryan Levon from pound for pound arm wrestling um i went down the pound for pound arm wrestling route because i wanted to uh start a league i wanted to start arm fights unleashed and i wanted to i thought that would that's something that i can build and and work with <clears throat> but then i found that tiring i found that difficult and then i started to not enjoy it as much and i was just like i want to just be me again i just want to be able to i just yeah. i just want to be able to do whatever the hell i want and i can't do whatever the hell i want under pound for pound armor so i can't go for a walk and and just talk about whatever the hell's going on uh that doesn't align and it starts to confuse yeah, it's not arm wrestling <laughs> so so the easy solution is make the channel your name and create playlists that are arm fights unleashed or a playlist that is uh training training reviews or handle reviews or equipment reviews or whatever um breakdowns whatever uh predictions uh all that sort of stuff you can just create playlists in those categories and the channel's you and then maybe one day you you might grow one of those playlists so substantially that it warrants one of them actually starting their own brand oh, new yeah. YouTube channel. And then if it's, if it's already got that much traction, it'll have no dramas getting monetized and you, you, you have, your viewership will just jump over there straight away. Won't be hard. That's how I would recommend doing it. So there may be plan for pan arm wrestling YouTube channel will come back someday, but when it's just comps and stuff when, like that. When, when it's, when there's, when there's content, when it's every month I'm putting on a massive card or something like that, then yeah, I'll be able to flip over to, Pound for pound arm wrestling is where the matches take place. Who knows? Hopefully, when our uh, borders open, we can do a WA versus Queensland card. Just get good. all get all our monsters good. and Ben Ben v Lachlan, Ryan yeah. v me, uh, you v Sam. I'll take Sam. Yep. Who you got for I wouldn't Jordan? mind. Uh, anyway? It'd have to be you, but wouldn't it? A big version okay. of you. Yeah, I don't know if Jordan's going to be 100 kilos. I don't know if I want any of that. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan talk. Uh, Jordan talks a big game about weight. Uh, uh, he he's he's talked that he's going to get to 110 kilos. He's talked a lot for a lot of years. He's a hard gainer. Yeah, he struggles yeah. to put on weight. So uh, he, he, I wouldn't expect more than a 94, 95. I think yeah. I'll, I'll put money that he'll be no heavier than 95 kilos come over the top. Yeah, see, I'm going the opposite way. I, I want to get back to sort of that 85 sort of kilo mark this year. And I mean, at 90, I, I feel pretty strong, but I also feel not great. Mm. Uh, I just, yeah. Yeah. Too much, too much well, belly. I, I'm in the same same phase. I I think I actually sit nicest around 94 kilos right now. Um, but I'd actually like to be a little bit leaner. I'd, I'd like to... And I only stopped, I was already on this process. I was already committed to getting to 86 kilos for Zlotti. Um, but then I got off at this match with Rob. And so I was like, oh, hang on a second. got to got to maintain my size. Um, but I would love to walk around at 90 and yeah. dehydrate to 86 for Zlotti. Because uh, I think I, I just, I just think I'd be really competitive at 86 kilos. Yeah. So uh, I would probably be, be nice to walk around at yeah, 84, 85 and, do the same, maybe drop to under 80 or something 80. for it. Yeah. yeah. So, the other guy I wouldn't mind getting over 
if we'd done a WA Queensland, would be Brock, get someone for Brock. He trains hard all the yep. time. So he'd, Maybe he'd Tor- be Torben and Brock or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's what we were kind of talking the other day and we sort of put the name Torben out there and might be mm. interesting. He's got a bit of a Kings move, doesn't he? So it could be a bit of he a does. Michael he's got Todd a, he's Jerry. Just, he did. He, he, Torben developed that style because he was terrified of breaking his arm when uh, he first came in. Like any inside pressure, he was like, oh, it, it just freaked him out. It scared him putting coming forward with his shoulder at all. So he just always turned like this and he developed this he yeah. just developed this open arm defense that yeah it's hard if, if if he gets it set i can't pin it if he gets it set yes so, <laughs> so that that could be a screamer if our old brock's on the old flop press and he's just kings yeah. moving out there. yeah it's our <laughs> own jerry crazy B. Michael Todd. it'll uh, the haters will go wild watching a match like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah do you do you do you see much hate for the flop press I find that weird when I, I see it every now and then, and I'm like, people. I've I've seen people as passionately talk about the flop press being a cheating move as much as the king's move, and I think, what are you guys on? That that makes no sense at all. It's like insanely hard to do. Like I can't yeah, do. A, I've you, got a, I've got a press, but I cannot flop press. It's just if I really really yeah. have to, I can, but it's not. It's painful. I don't don't enjoy it. Hurts it hurts your wrist. And you're giving away so many fundamentals that are really valuable. To, oh, oh, no thanks. Lars Rabakin and Jerry Cataret, the only two people that I think of that flop press at the elite level. Yeah, I mean, there's not many guys that do it, is there? It's <laughs> just one of those, yeah. Even just flat out normal press, I mean, you don't see a lot of it. It's mm. more people obviously have a more like that inside press, but. But yeah, you still don't see it all the time, do you? It's yeah, Kazakhs, Kazakhs love it. I hear there's Kazakhs coming to over the top. Geez, that'll be good. I heard that that Phil and the AAF are very active in inviting internationals. So I think we might have some internationals there, which is we need that. We need we need it to be a big event. Uh, that will be yeah, just great sure. for all of us. Yeah. To get the opportunity to pull those people too. So, well, it doesn't get much better than them, does it? It's, they're always at the pointy end. Yeah, oh, yeah. pretty much, pretty much gone through all the questions. I don't know if there's anything you could think about adding. Um, I mean, yeah. it's all good. I think, I, I think we covered most of it off. It, yeah. The sport is at a funny time at the moment with online, the online presence of fans and yeah. athletes all mixed together so sometimes it's hard to tell who's an arm wrestler and who's not i don't know you go into those facebook forums i can't tell sometimes yeah the talkative yeah. people i don't know if they're actually an arm wrestler or not i wouldn't have fucking yeah. there is a few now isn't it it's whereas the past the only fans we had were other arm wrestlers it seems like yeah there's actually fans now <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, which, which is weird, isn't it? And, and, then, and then you can't tell when they're when they're really talkative ones in in the forums, and you, you you're not sure like is this person an arm wrestler or not? And they might look strong, but they're not necessarily an arm wrestler either. So I don't. Yeah, know. it's weird. But yeah. I mean, that uh, Prideep's probably day. a bit like that, isn't it? Yeah. He's obviously well, he, he talks he, a lot about arm wrestling, but he's not even an arm wrestler, is he? So I, he's a great he's a great example of making it through that that difficult period of time Pradeep as you said he's not an arm wrestler he's and I, I admire Pradeep even more because he's done it from India yeah. uh, and let's be honest it's to crack into an American fan base as uh, from India is is it's a hurdle that, uh, that I didn't have to go through um, yeah. and so he's been consistent he's got through the hate and he's actually come out the other side with he has a career now in arm wrestling like, like it or not Pradeep earns a career in arm wrestling that yeah. pays his yeah. bills. He makes enough money doing that to live in India. And I think it's Which fine. Awesome. I mean, obviously, he's not an arm wrestler, but I think arm wrestling is like any sport. If if you love it that much and you watch it that much, you're still going to be able to pick up on things. You understand and, it, don't you? Yeah, yeah. you can still understand well, he, what's he, happening. He's pretty, he's pretty damn accurate. Like, with his analysis, I think he, he, he hits the nail on the head most times. Yeah. Um, so I agree. You don't need to be an arm wrestler to be able to give it to be able to give relevant and thoughtful arm wrestling commentary. So 
it obviously helps to be an arm wrestler. You can there's an extra dimension that you can talk yeah. about, you can you can relate to, but there's still plenty to talk about, even if you're not. <laughs> All right, I'll uh, I won't take up any more of your night. It's probably getting pretty late over there now, isn't it? Ah, uh, ten thirty. Not too bad. Yeah. Not too bad. I look forward to seeing this on the Kyle Howarth yeah, YouTube channel. I'll, I will. I'll, um, I don't know if it'll be up tonight. I might get tired. What is your nickname? What is your nickname, uh, by the way? I yeah. think Brick, Brick came up with an iron arm. So iron arm. That was like back when I was a year. I, I, it might have been the first time he ever felt me. And he was like, oh, it's like a piece of iron. It just doesn't move. So mm. I, I never really... Yeah, I've never been a big fan of nicknames, so I probably won't put that in there. <laughs> it's just going to be Kyle. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle Howard. Yeah, good stuff. All right, man. Well, thanks, thanks for having me on. I enjoyed yeah, it. Thanks for your time. All right.